Hey, a pleasant good afternoon, everyone. This is Sports for Night News. I'm Joe Borick. As always, if you like the content, please subscribe down below or at that easy widget up at the top at the end. There's going to be a quick preview to the Houston Astros versus Chicago White Sox series. Of course, as I talked about in my White Sox playoff bound video, I'll be releasing the Astros one right after this uh, video that's coming in a little bit late. But their issue is going to be how they play on the road and how they play in Houston, which is, of course, where the series opens up since they're 40 and 41 away, but 53 and 28 on the road, absolutely fantastic on the road, where the Astros are also electric at home, 51 and 30, and pretty good on the road at 44 and 37, unlike the Shy Sox, who are one game below 500 on the road. So they're going to obviously have to step up and up the ante in their road play in order to have a good chance in this series. However, when I pick my playoff bracket, I feel like they are going to do that in order to have a good chance in this series. That's why I feel like this is going to be a really tight series. And I'm like some fans that I've seen just looking at different Facebook groups and whatever, thinking the Astros, because of their two-way record being good away and good at home, uh, will be able to take this one fairly easily. I just don't see that happening because we've already saw from the playoff this year that guys that struggled to round out the season, Bogarts in the handful of games rounded the season, was a player of the game starting them off with a home run. We saw Chris Taylor, who was really bad in his 70-something at-bats to round out the season, didn't even get the start, hits the clutch home run as a player of the game for the Dodgers. So once the playoffs start, all that stuff and all that crap and everything from the regular season gets thrown out the window, thrown to the wayside, and you're just here to ball, you're here to come, you're here to play, and you're here to just grind and go and try to push for the playoffs. And when it comes to the Astros, and when it comes to the Astros and White Sox, both of these teams obviously have a really deep team. You have Jose Abreu, of course, on the White Sox. On the Astros, you have the great um, Carlos Correa. You also have, even in a down year, you still have Jose Altuve on that team. And you have very good pitching. So this team knows how to pick it from the pitching. They even figured out how to still pitch very consistently this year with one of the best pitchers in baseball out of the lineup all season. Uh, which is Justin Verlander. So the Astros always figured out. They always scout pitching well. They were able to do that again this year. Um, they, of course, um, also have one of the better middle infielders in the game, which is Alex Bregman, who didn't have as sharp of a year this year, but is still a very good player. And then one of the more underrated hitters in baseball, in Yuli Goriel, excuse me, who had 15 home runs and 80 RBI. So they definitely have the thoroughbred line of Jordan Alvarez is definitely that thoroughbred, obviously, if you leave one over to him he's going to hit it a million miles away so you got to watch out for those guys they got a deep lineup they got a good um pitching rotation there now when it comes to veteran guys that people might know more in your pitching rotation which doesn't mean anything because like I said if guys can step up they're step up sometimes you hear it's better to have the veterans which is kind of true but we've seen different things happen in the postseason before like how hot that 07 Rockies team got, how hot, um, and even almost beating the Dodgers, the Cardinals team got, and they had Wayno pitch, of course, but other than beyond him, they got a lot of really young catch, and that's how the Astros were able to do it with some inexperienced, great young pitching, and then you also have Greinke and others there, of course, at the top, where when we go to the Shy Sox, it's pretty much the same, except for they do have those veteran pitchers people would recognize. Um, even though he had a bad year, they do have the Keuchels of the world. Again, maybe in the postseason, the stats get wiped away. He's been good in the postseason. Will he be able to step back and do that for them? That would be huge if he steps up. They also, of course, got the Kopex of the world, who's great out there. Carlos Rondon had a great bounce back year. Um, you also have, of course, um, wherever, there he is, Lance Lynn, who had a very good year as well for them. And then Ronaldo Lopez, once he came off of injury, was also very key for them as well as Lucas Giolito, who's one of the nastier people in baseball. So if you had to rank the rotations, you would have to just by name brand and also the fact that they're going to statistically give that one without Verlander to the White Sox. Now, if you're ranking the lineups, it's pretty even though, because like I say, you got Correa, you got Bregman, you got Alvarez as the big kahunas in the lineup for the Astros. And then when you go into the White Sox, you have, of course, Jose Abreu, who's a beast. You have Tim Anderson, who can hit the ball wherever it's pitched. Um, you got Johan Makata, who seems to just get better each day. And you got Jimenez and Robert, where I guess um, going off of that, you have Goriel, so that's four to five. Maybe you can give, in terms of the big guns, a little favorite to the White Sox when it comes to lineup. But again, that goes with how they're going to show up and show out 
on the road, and that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to wipe out all that crap from the regular season. That's what happens once you get to the playoffs. Just step in here, play, perform, and be the team that they are on paper. And that's also exactly how the Astros are going to have to do the reverse. They're going to have to keep doing their thing from how consistent they've been in the regular season at home and keep playing with that momentum at home, ride their fans, uh, ride their great pitching, and ride their very good uh, lethal, especially middle of that order for that team, and really pounce there and take advantage of their hitters' ballpark like they've been doing all season. The only issue for that is the White Sox have a great team to take advantage of a ballpark like that, too, if you leave some pitches up. That's one of the reasons why I do think they'll have a better chance to bounce it back on the road, too. The ballpark plays well to the types of players the White Sox have as well as the Astros. So I do think this series is going to go at least four games, if not the full DS um, five-game stretch. And then we'll have to see um, there whoever wins. Because I could easily see this series being one where they even take the first two, say the Astros. But then the White Sox are so good at home, they win two. And then you're in the final game of the series there. And you're in a great uh, match, uh, basically a one-game playoff again, just like the wild card was, to see who moves on into the next round, which will honestly be great to see. I picked on my bracket, so I'm just going to stick to my gut on this one. I did pick the Shy Sox because I feel like they're a team that's very good on paper, has that proven pitching rotation of veterans. If Keuchel steps up again for them, that would be huge. They also have the more proven veterans in their bullpen, not um guys that have um, been coming along just in the last couple of years. But the Astros do have a great overall team. They just don't have as proven of the guys there. So I wouldn't be shocked at all if they win. I'm going Shy Sox by like 5 to 10% max. So I think this is going to be a very close series with a lot of very close games. I hope you all enjoyed this preview to the Astros and White Sox series. Everyone have a great, safe, and pleasant day. And enjoy the fantastic postseason. The wild card games have been great. Now we're into the series play. Peace out, everybody. Enjoy and subscribe down below or on that wonderful widget up above.